Hey, hi everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to do an F test to test a subset of regressors. We've got multiple regression here, three exponential variables, and you're asked to test whether there's a seasonal effect. So you've got three dummy variables representing the uh, season to model the seasonality effect. You want to test for the presence of seasonality. So this is testing whether the seasonal effects are significant. Okay guys, so first of all, state the null and the alternative. The null is that there's no seasonal effect, i.e. the three dummy coefficients on the three dummy variables are zero. That's the alternative that at least one of the coefficients on the dummies is not zero. Then the F test formula, the useful one here, given the information, is this. Remember there are different forms, but here we I've given explain sum of squares, so I've used the explain sum of squares rather than putting residual sum of squares, although I could do that as well. So let's just go through this. There are two models then, the unrestricted and the restricted model. I went through that in the previous uh, example. So the unrestricted model is the bigger model and it's the one that doesn't have any conditions, whereas the restricted model is the smaller model, it imposes the restriction. So here it imposes that three of those dummies are zero so it's got to so therefore the restricted model is contained in the bigger model the word they use is that the restricted model is nested in the unrestricted model notation oh okay I want this to say ESS because I said use ESS here so ESS subscript U stands for the explained sum of squares in the unrestricted model this I want this to say ESS subscript R for explain some of the squares in the restricted model divided by r r is the r is the number of parameter restrictions i'll go through that in a moment rssu is a residual sum of squares from the unrestricted model n is the number of observations and which are the same in both when you're estimating restricted and unre unrestricted model p is the number of coefficients in the full the unrestricted model. Okay, now let's show you where I get these numbers from. Explain some of the squares for unrestricted is given it's given right here. Explain some of the squares. And that's from the unrestricted model because this whole paragraph here is telling you when three dummy variables were added. So that's augmenting the model, it's making it bigger, it's adding to it. That's the unrestricted model. Explain some of the squares from the restricted model. That is given here, this is the output. Residual sum of squares from the restricted model was also given. It's right here. Now residual sum of squares from the from the unrestricted model, uh, which I'll have to calculate it, it's this number. TSS, total sum of squares minus this explain some of the squares that are unrestricted. We have this, it's right here, but we need to work this out because we're not given it in the question. But use the relationship that TS total sum of squares is equal to explain sum of squares plus residual sum of squares for whichever model we are looking at. So TSS, uh, this is an important remark, TSS is the same irrespective of which model we're using, the unrestricted or restricted. So here I'm using restricted because I have the figure here, this and this already. Okay. I don't have RSSU, that's the point. So get that, that's my total sum of squares. So that's how I substitute into there and then minus ES, ESS from the un, um, unrestricted and that's how I get this number. This would not work if you mix them up. So explain sum of squares from reduced plus residual sum of squares with unrestricted. No, no, no. R, now R is the number of restrictions we're testing. We're testing here three dummy variables are all equal to zero so that's three coefficients three coefficients each is zero so it's three constraints n that's the total number of observations in the sample we're told we have quarterly data so that's four observations per year going from 1971 to 76 inclusive so that's like how many years that's six years so six times four that's 24 common mistake students make here is just to say oh 76 minus 71 that gives me 5 okay that's 5 years but it's not because you haven't counted it's inclusive 
Okay, it's inclusive on your years. If unsure, just think of an easy kind of two easy years and just work out on by your hand, and then and then it should be obvious whether you're right or wrong. P that's the total number of parameters that the unrestricted model, unrestricted model. Let's count it. So it's this. This is the restricted model plus the three. So I've got one, two, three, four, and then plus three. So that's seven. Okay. I plug all these numbers, and you can just verify that because I'm not very good at plugging in numbers. Check. Do you get this number? Because that's what I get. Plugging all of this into that thing. Um, remark here is. Uh, these two brackets are important because it means take that difference first and divide it by r. It's not to take that and divide that by r. That's a, some students make that error. That it's not this divided by r and then this minus that thing. All right. Likewise, this is saying do this first n minus p, and then do rs. This rs is divided by that. It's not this divided by n minus p. If you know what I mean. This f test is a one-tailed test. So look at the significance level and kinometrics usually just settle five percent fine. So from the table, look at a degree of freedom f. The numerator is three seventeen, which comes right from here. It's always that's in the numerator, that's in the denominator for the f distribution. Three point two. If you're not sure, there's always these kind of calculators, uh, distribution calculators, are on the internet that you can check or use uh, R software that will give it to you easily. My F statistic five, uh, 3.59 is greater than the critical value, so I reject the null at the 5% level. In other words, uh, I reject it in favor of the alternative that at least one of the seasonal slopes is zero. Okay. The one I've wrote here is it's not a standard way to write it in textbooks. The textbooks will replace this difference by this, so in terms of the difference of the residual sum of squares. So the whole thing in terms of residual sum of squares. Um, I did it like this because when I look, look, look at it originally, I didn't see it, the residual sum of squares. I just saw these two immediately, so I thought, okay, I just use that, which is fine because this holds. This is true, which you can prove, guys, using the fact here that TSS is equal to ESS plus RSS. Think about it. It's not so hard. Just do the substitution. Do a substitution for this guy in terms of RSS and TSS, and this in terms of TSS and ESS, and you're going to find that it's the same thing, left and right. Uh, one other thing I just remembered is, yeah, if you have to memorize this, usually not in the formula sheet, a uh, common mistake is to get these two the wrong way around. If you got these the wrong way around, you get a negative number. But you know something which is distributed as an F cannot take negative values. In other words, if you get a negative value, you made you you've got these two the wrong way around. Okay? All right, that's all from me today. Comment, like, share.